Hello, and welcome back to the Out of Spec Podcast. Today, I have Tom. Tom, you just figured out that Ford, I guess, has increased the amperage with the software update, which has given it a better charge curve. Can you give us an update to what's happened? Yeah, so uh, Ford has, uh, or is pushing in the process of pushing out an over-the-air update to improve the charging characteristics of the F-150 Lightning. So, um, Increasing the amperage is just one thing that they've done. They've really reworked the whole first half of the charging curve. Uh, and it's added, uh, it's made up uh, significant uh, time savings. So first off, talk about the uh, the full charging power. The Ford's uh, uh, DC fast charging uh, strategy is that when you plug the vehicle in, this is for the Lightning and the Mustang Mach-E, you get the, the full amount of amperage that they'll allow the vehicle to take in for a short period of time. It's usually between 7 and 10 minutes. And uh, for the Lightning, that used to be 450 amps. They're now increasing it to 500 amps. And after that f initial period that they don't really have a name for it, but Kyle and I call it like the boost, the, the Ford boost period, then the charging, curve, the charging power slows down and uh, goes into its regular curve. So previously, the Lightning would take in 450 amps, seven to eight minutes. Then it would uh, drop drastically down uh, and charge for a couple of minutes at uh, somewhere around 145 kilowatts, I think, and then take another drop down to like 120 kilowatts and hold that all the way to 80%. Uh, but with the new charging curve, and this is for the extended range battery pack, the standard range charges a little bit less. Um, the uh, standard range, uh, the extended range battery pack now takes, will, will pull 500 amps from almost any starting point, as long as it's under around 50% state of charge, which most electric vehicles don't do. This is part of Ford's DC fast charging strategy. Most of the uh, other electric vehicles has a program charging curve. And if you don't char plug in at a very low state of charge, you don't get like that full power. And, and it just picks up the regular charging curve. But Ford doesn't do that. Almost anywhere you plug in, you get this boost, this 500 amp boost. And then after that, uh, it doesn't drop off a cliff like it used to. It holds a higher charging rate, uh, like 165 kilowatts for a few minutes before it goes down into that lower, like about 125 kilowatts, and it holds that to 80%. So now it's charging at higher than 125 kilowatts all the way up till higher than 50% state of charge, even if you start way down at 10 or 15%. So it added up to, um, I did charge recordings and I've recorded with my lightning a lot. Uh, it's about a five minute saving okay. savings when you're charging 10 to 80%. If you're charging if for a shorter period of time, it would be even a, a bigger savings. Like if you were charging from 10 to, uh, uh, 50%, let's say, well, actually it would still be around five minutes, but since the overall time is, is, is shorter, it would be a bigger percentage of the, of the savings. Okay. If that and makes sense. Yeah, no, that, that does. How, how much has the peak changed? So, uh, you know, with 500 amps, uh, the lightning will charge at now, uh, around 180 kilowatts will be the peak, okay. maybe a little more. It, it can even get up to 190 kilowatts if you start at a high state of charge, because you get that boost period right. wherever you plug in. So if you were to start at like 40%, uh, the vehicle, because the pack voltage is going to be much higher at 40% than it is at 10% when I plug in, uh, you, you, you might even see 190 or a little bit more than 190 kilowatts. I only saw 182, but that was plugging in at 10%. So I'll fool around with it. And I, I'm sure um, I'll be able to pull over 190 kilowatts if I plug in at a higher state of charge. And I guess this puts the 2022 and 23 model year on par with what the 24 model year and 25 Lightning has. Yeah, the, those vehicles, 20, in 24, Ford uh, didn't announce this. They didn't tell anybody, but they, they gave the 24 Lightnings this new charging curve. And um, they didn't immediately push it out to the 22 and 23s. But I knew something was up because I had friends that have 2024s. And they're like, Tom, I'm seeing over 180 kilowatts. Uh, you know, you don't seem to ever reported that. And I was like, no, I've never seen more than 180 kilowatts. Uh, and, and I reached out to Ford. This is six months ago. 
and they didn't get back to me, which isn't uncommon. You know, you know, Kyle could tell you, we reach out to these automakers all the time. Sometimes you got to ping them two or three times before you get an answer. And then I actually forgot about it. But then when Kyle organized the uh, IANA soft opening, like the, the test down in Apex, I drove down with my Lightning and I timed it. So like we were pulling into Apex with like 0% state of charge. And I recorded from 0 to 90% there. And the in the early part of the charging session, because the, the uh, Alpatronic uh, HYC 600s that they use show your amperage. Electrify America doesn't, and I typically charge more if, in this area if I'm going to DC fast charge on EA. And I noticed it said 500 uh, amps, and I'm like, hmm, okay, now I really have to circle back to Ford and say, okay, guys, there's a material change in my vehicle, and you need to let me know what's happening here. Uh, and they did, and they said, yeah, uh, they asked, you know, engineering and so forth, said, oh, yeah, so they're pushing it out on the new 10.3.0 software, but I got it early. Uh, I got it um, in December uh, yeah. with a, a customer satisfaction update, they call it, and uh, I must have got some sort of notification in the vehicle. Honestly, I, did, I, never, I never saw it. Um, it's possible my wife got in the vehicle and drove it one day, and it had the update, and she just, like, <laughs> Cleared it, you know what I mean? And I don't DC fast charge a lot. I don't need to, Isaiah. I charge at home, you know, and and uh, the vehicle has almost 300 miles of range, quite a bit less in the winter, maybe 225. But every day it has that range. So I, I don't need, I don't regularly DC fast charge. I only do it when I'm going on road trips. So mm -hmm. I honestly hadn't noticed until we were at the IANA site. And I was like, yeah, okay, now we have to talk about this because yeah. you did something. It's interesting to me though, that Ford didn't like announce like, Hey everybody, we're right. making the lightning charge better. And they didn't, they didn't, they, I'm the first person to report on it. Yeah. It seems like something like this. I mean, not only from a marketing perspective, but just a performance perspective showing that charging takes a little bit less than it you know, did previously just over uh, an over the air update. I think that's a pretty big, uh, bold move. But do you know why Ford waited till now? I mean, maybe do they have some battery longevity concerns? Because, you know, the 2022 and 23, the Lightning's been on sale for quite a while now. Uh, but why now? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it has to do with that. Um, uh, you know, it's there's always all the OEMs. It's always a trade off between how fast do we pump the electrons in? And are we concerned about having warranty claims? Is this going to cost us money down the road? You know, if our customers have to wait an extra 10 minutes when they charge, but their battery is going to last five years longer, you know, will they, you know, which would they rather have? We want everything. We want the batteries to last forever and we want it to charge in five minutes. But, you know, so uh, th this is, don't forget, this is really first gen for Ford. I mean, I know they had the Focus EV and, you know, They've had plug-in hybrids, they have battery experience, but Mustang Mach-E and Lightning are really first-gen, you know, full-on, real good electric vehicles that weren't compliance cars. And uh, these legacy brands are very cautious. You know, they, they, they're they not willing to take risks, and I think that was part of it. And I think that um, they wanted to fully test it and make sure that, you know, this wasn't going to shave a couple of years off the battery life. I wouldn't be surprised if we get another update at some point down the road. Mm -hmm. And they allow it to charge a little bit faster. The Lightning doesn't charge very well on a DC fast charger compared to a lot of other electric vehicles with that size battery. We're, the Ford's really not stressing the pack. It's 131 kilowatt hour usable pack. And it doesn't even touch 200 kilowatts at any t time in the charging curve. So, uh, you know, it, it, it doesn't even do 2C charging. You know, and there's, there's batteries in China that do 10C now. <laughs> so, you know... Uh, I think Ford wants the batteries. They've told their customers this battery will last a lifetime, will last a lifetime of the vehicle, and they want to make sure that that happens. Uh, so I, you know, they're going to be cautious. I guess at at what point do you think this this five minute right time improvement on this curve? I mean, do you think a lot of owners are going to notice this on their their own? Is it that much of an an improvement? Well, don't forget that's five minute improvement, ten to eighty. But the real, the, the, the vehicle made up that five minutes in 10 to 50. From 50% on, it was basically the mm. same curve. So, um, yeah, I, th I, I think uh, people will notice. I mean, not, not everybody for sure, because I think a lot of people have no idea even how 
fast the vehicle charges. You know, they they don't DC fast charge all the time. When they're on a road trip, they plug in, they go walk inside where Panera or uh, Starbucks or wh- whatever the uh, um, the business is where the chargers are. And, you know, they'll use the restroom, grab a bite to eat. So they, most people won't. But the people that kind of understand what's going on with their car, they will because they they check their app. They look at the charging power. They, they You know, if somebody regularly let's say has a lightning and they, you know, they have a regular route and they know, you know, they have to stop and charge from, from 20 to 50% just to give them that extra 30% to get to the, to finish the route for the, uh, their, whatever they're doing. They'll notice that, Hey, this is kind of weird. You know, like it's, 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 it, this is faster than it used to be. If they do the same charging all the time, if, if people, like the average person that might every now and then plug in a 10%, then the next time at 25%, that they kind of won't realize that. But um, okay. it's not that big of a difference for somebody to notice. It's an 11% inc- uh, if increase, uh, 11% better, 10 to 80%. But if you charge 10 to 50%, I didn't do the math yet, it's probably 20% faster. And wow. now you start getting to the point where people would notice it. Once right. it's 25, 30% faster, now you'd say, oh, wow, that was a lot faster than what I'm used to. Do you think we could see similar changes on the Mustang Mach-E? Of course, the Lightning, way bigger battery. But could they yeah. do something like this? Okay. I think so. And I've asked Ford and uh, got, we'll get back to you. Okay. So, um, <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. And they also don't like to, um, I'm not expecting to get an answer at this point. And I'll tell you why. The companies even if they are working on this for the Maki, the media departments will not say, oh yeah, we're working on it. They'll never do that because if for some reason, as they're working on it, they decide, hmm, maybe we shouldn't do this. We're noticing some degradation in our tests. Now, all of a sudden they've committed to it. They've said, yeah, we're doing it. And now if they don't do it, it's like, well, wait a minute, what happened here? What, what, what's the problem? So I don't expect to get an answer unless it's an imminent OTA that's going to happen right. in the next month or so when they've already committed. Yes, we're going to do this. So um, I'll stay on Ford. I'll try to get, I'll try to uh, get answers, but um, I, uh, I, I, I don't know for sure if the Maki is going to get it, but I, ex- I do expect the, that they will. Okay. Yeah. I'll definitely have to reach back out to you. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I kind of have last question kind of ending this out with the increase of amperage. I also noticed, right, Tesla with the Cybertruck on the V3.5 stations, they increased the amperage by 900 amps for the Cybertruck. We see Ford increasing, right, more here. I guess what are some of the advantages or disadvantages or the risks of increasing the, the amperage? Well, the amperage is the current, and, and that's what really – creates a lot of heat, you know, you can, you, you, and, and that's really the enemy of, of the battery packs is heat. Uh, that's really what causes the majority of, of degradation. And, and that's why the vehicles have to have a really sophisticated thermal management system to, to keep the, 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 the mod, the, all the battery cells and all the components cool. And, um, and that's what's the advantages of having a higher voltage battery pack, you know, to these 800 volts, Lucid's got over a 900 volt battery pack. BYD is coming out with a thousand volt battery pack now, um, and w- with higher battery vo- volt, with higher pack voltage, you can have less current and still get the same amount of charging power. And so that that's you know the p- pushing pushing the voltage up is a better strategy than pushing the amperage up. It, it, you know I know the power is a function of one times the other, but for instance, I have a uh, Chevy Equinox EV also. And it's got an extraordinarily low battery pack voltage. And that causes GM to force, we, in order for it to charge even decently, and it, it barely charges decently, to be honest with you, it, it has to pull 500 amps for like the first 15 minutes of charging. And that creates a lot of heat. And then you get thermal derating. And, you know, it's, it's uh, okay. you, you know, it's the, that's, that's the, you'd rather push the pack voltage up rather than right. the uh, amperage. Okay. Perfect. That makes so much sense now. (laughs) Well, awesome. Of course, Tom has a 24-minute video going in-depth 
uh, and testing this. And so, of course, that will be linked in the description of this video. But thank you so much, Tom, for joining me and helping uh, explain that not only to me, but our, our listeners and viewers as well. Listen, I'll always come on out of spec. You know, Kyle and I have been buds for a long time. And uh, we, uh, you know, we, 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 we both, we have an open door policy for both of our channels. So thanks for having me on, Isaiah. Awesome. My pleasure. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. This is the Out of Spec Podcast. As I said, Tom's video will be in the link of the, will be linked in the description below. My name is Isaiah, and I'll see you guys in the next one.